All right, let's look briefly at torque. So whenever we have an object and a force acts on it, if the force does not act at the center of mass of that object, that object might rotate. So we look at masses as point masses usually, and then we say, okay, there is a force that pulls on it, and um, let's say that we make the force pull on it in this direction, then we know that the, the mass will go in that direction. Or uh, a different mass goes like this, and we push on it with a force F, and we know that the mass will move in the direction of the force. But now, if we have <clears throat> a mass that looks like this, and we exert a force on it this way, this mass may not go in a straight line anymore because the force is not acting at the center of mass. So the center of mass of the object would be here, and the object might just rotate about that center of mass. So whenever we have a force acting on an object and causing it to rotate, we can talk about torque. The symbol for torque is this fancy tau, and that is given by R cross F. So it is a cross product between what we call the lever arm and the force. So in magnitude, the cross product is magnitude of R, magnitude of F, times the sine of the angle between those two vectors. So let's look at another example here. Let's say that we have an object and it's pinned at this point. So we will exert a force F at this end. As a result of this force acting on it, the object will rotate like this. So at a later time, it might be even vertical. So we call this distance R the lever arm. So the lever arm is the distance from where the force acts to the axis of rotation. If we had that force acting at an angle, so here is the same um, object again, and we are, let's say, pulling on it in this direction with a force F, then this angle becomes important because um, the, the lever arm is still this length R, and we are looking for the cross product between R and F, meaning that we're going to take the R and the force that's perpendicular to the R, and then the torque will be R F sine phi, because essentially we're just take the perpendicular component, so this is F sine phi, multiplied by um, the lever arm R. Um, let's look at the other component, because of course there's going to be an X and a Y component uh, to every, every force. So this component is F cosine phi. So now think about this force pushing at this free end, pushing it towards the pinned area. This force will not cause this rod to rotate. So we only want the forces that make the object rotate when we're looking at the torque. So we need a component of the force to be perpendicular to the lever arm.